be here this morning. Uh, we're going to stand and worship in just a minute, but uh, I just wanted to take a minute to introduce my friend Maddie, who's here leading us in worship today. I know you'll give her a warm welcome. Be sure to say hi to her after the service. And my daughter Callie is up here as well singing today. Uh, so before we sing, let's stand and let's just come before the Lord in prayer this morning. God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this morning uh, where we can gather in your name. Uh, Lord, we are here for you. We are here because of you. Um, God, we just ask that you meet us in this place as we lift our voices to you. Have your way in our hearts, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Actually, let me say one thing really quick. We did this song last week. It's called Gone. And the chorus says, gone, gone, now my sin is dead and gone, and I sing hallelujah. Done, done, he is risen, it is done, and I sing hallelujah. And so I just like to think about that and the meaning of those words, and that this is a celebratory song. It doesn't have to be Easter to talk about his death and his resurrection, because it gives us life and power each and every day, amen? Amen. Here we go, we're gonna sing, whoa. It wasn't for nothing that you shed your blood So I'm gonna live like my shame is to the way I was Oh, I'm gonna live like my chains are gone
follow him. All right, turn to someone this morning and say hi, say hey. Kids, you can head to the back and you're going to go out to Kids Church, follow the signs. Good morning, KCC. How you doing? Good. Okay, a couple of things. My name is Pastor Kenny Bryant, and uh, I'm one of the pastors here at KCC. If you're visiting with us or new, it's really nice having you here. And uh, there is a, a QR code that is up here. It's the same one that's on that handout that you were given this morning when you came in. And if you're visiting with us, we'd like you to snap on that QR code and uh, just let us know you are here, and uh, if you do, then we'll follow up with an email and try to answer any questions 
that you might have about the church and its ministry. Again, it's really, really uh, glad, uh, we are glad to have you here. I tried to get Sarah McLaughlin, is that her name? I was going to have her come and, and uh, sing in the arms of an angel because uh, we have a piano that needs a home. It's been abandoned and it's in the corner of our auditorium and anybody that wants that piano, first come, first serve, but it's gotta go to a really good home that will care and love that piano. So if you could t take that piano home with you today or sometime this week, that would be great. It's free, by the way. Last week, uh, I offered you, or I talked to you about our church work days and the new church app that we have. Do you remember the app that we talked about? Here it is, the new church app. As you can see, we got about a dozen hits, but this morning, we'd like to boost our post and talk a little bit more about the church work days that we are having every Wednesday night in the month of May and on Saturday morning. So on Wednesday night, it's six to eight, and on Saturday mornings, it's nine to 12. And we not only have a lot of yard work that needs to get done, but we also have a stage out here that needs to get completed. And uh, we'll be working on that stage on Saturday mornings. So uh, if you are available to help, I'll be out in the uh, auditorium, uh, out in the lobby right after uh, the service. And um, I'll show you how to work this app with a pen. And you can just uh, sign your name down here and check uh, which opportunity that, uh, that you can make it. Uh, speaking of church apps, would everybody pull out their phone right now? Get your phone. All right, and uh, on your phone, I would like you to pull up your calendar. All right, so get your phone, get your calendar. You got your calendar. All right, the first Thursday of May is, I sure hope it's May 4th. Am I right? It is May 4th. But not only is it May 4th, it is the National Day of Prayer. And it's when Christians all across this nation come together and meet and pray for our country, pray for the state in which they reside and the townships, the various townships that we are from. We're gonna give you three opportunities on that day to come together and pray. Uh, I'm gonna be here at seven o'clock on Thursday morning. Uh, on your way into work, you can come uh, by. Uh, you, I'll be here from seven to eight. Uh, you can stay the entire hour or if you've only got five or 10 minutes, that's fine too. But if uh, you could join me, uh, that would be great. And then at 12 o'clock noon, you can join me again. I'll be down at the uh, Kalamazoo uh, City Hall, and I'll be joined with other pastors there, local pastors, uh, as we pray for our community. That is at noon on May 4th. And then that evening at 6 o'clock, uh, we've rented Merrill Park, which is right down the street here. Do you know where that is in Comstock? It's right behind Nico's. Everybody knows where that is. Uh, right behind Nico's. And we'll be meeting for at 6 o'clock there. And we're going to meet with other uh, Comstock uh, churches and pastors and congregations. In fact, if you live in Comstock, how many of you live in Comstock? Raise your hand. So if you live in Comstock, you're going to be getting a mailer at the end of this week or the beginning of next week inviting you to that because we're inviting all the Comstock residents. But even if you don't live in Comstock, I don't, I live up in Cooper, but I'm going to be coming down and joining with this church and the community Christians to pray for, again, our community. So there's, there are three opportunities for you uh, if you would... Um, uh, check one of those or, or come to one of those and, and pray pray for your community. Would you do that? That's one of the things I want to be known for as a church, that we pray for our community. There's a lot of good reasons to be excited about KCC. God is doing some awesome things here. If you want to be in a church where God is really doing some things, uh, making a difference in the community, be part of this church. And one of the cool things about KCC uh, is that we have a, a leadership team that's really, really strong. We have a board of elders that's really strong. A couple of uh, weeks ago, we got to hear from Dan Frizzo as uh, he uh, taught us that morning. And this morning, uh, we get to hear from Joel Isinger. So would you welcome Elder Joel Isinger to the platform? <laughs> Good 
Thanks, Kenny. You did a great job. I know that most people are really, we have a high level of excellence for announcements, and you did a good job. For, peop for people that aren't here every week, usually I'm the guy giving announcements, and he or Dave is preaching, so I'm proud of you. And if you see me randomly smile throughout my message, it's because that's usually what Kenny tells me before I give announcements, like, remember to smile. So if you see me randomly, just go, it's because Kenny's in my head. Um, let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, we are excited to serve you. We are excited to listen to what you have to say. It was obvious that the Spirit was here as we praise and worship this morning through music. But I now pray that your word can be heard through me. And so I just give you that. I give you my words and pray that whatever people need to hear in this auditorium, it can be heard and it can be applied and it can further your kingdom. I love you and praise you. Amen. Amen. All right. So who has or knows someone who has this sign, Joshua 24, 15, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Somewhere in your house, plaque on the wall, whatever it may be. Yeah, a lot of people do. It's, you go to Hobby Lobby, it's all over the place. And it's great when you walk into someone's home that has that sign, it signifies this is a Christian home. And that's fantastic. But today, during this message, what I want to do is I want to look at that verse, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. What does that mean to say that in today's world, in today's society? It's a lot harder to say. The reasons why I chose this verse to talk on is threefold. One is my passion. I have two passions, my faith and my family. A lot of things I love to do, but my faith and my family are two things that I'm passionate about. And the only two things that really can make me cry, so just be ready for that, and it's, it's fine. Um, career. My career for over 25 years was in child and family welfare. I was a child protective service investigator for a while. I was a trainer for the state of Michigan where I trained, me and four other people trained all the CPS workers, foster care and adoption workers for the state of Michigan. And in that job, I'm sure that you know, most people say, when I say I was a CPS investigator, like, oh, you must have saw a lot of hard things. And I did. The other reason why I chose this verse is because my family, the, see, I told you. Yeah. Um, the family that I grew up in was faith-based. I was lucky enough to see my aunts and my uncles and my mom and people just praying, preaching, teaching, studying the Bible. That was normal for me. So I was fortunate enough to have that just kind of as like my daily norm, my kind of my daily standard. And so I would not say I'm an expert in anything, but if I have expertise in anything, it's family and family function. Before we get into the verse too deep, I want to talk about it. I want to dissect it a little bit. But I want to tell you a story about a bear, a bear taking a stand. So me and five of my buddies went hiking through, through Yosemite. We did a 110-mile hike through Yosemite, and most of it was like high altitude up in, up in the above tree line. So we used compass and stuff to get where we needed to go. And every day, we would do about 10, 12 miles, and inevitably, during the day, we would get separated. So we'd be walking by ourselves a lot of time because some people would walk faster or slower. My buddy always stopped to fish, whatever it may be. So a lot of times, we find ourselves walking by ourselves. And one day, that was what I was doing on the hike, just walking along. And if you're walking in bear country by yourself, what should you be doing? Yes, make line of bear bells, exactly. And I did not have a bear bell, and I wasn't making any noise. So you can see where the story's going. So I'm walking along this trail. There's a river beside me, just walking along and just enjoying what's there. And about 150 feet up, around a curve that goes into the woods, was a sow bear, a, ma a, a mama bear, a female bear. And I looked up and looked, Ugh! And I was startled. I wasn't really scared because any bear I've ever seen before, and you see on TV, the bear sees a human, they run away. That's just what they do almost always. So I stopped, and then the bear looked over and saw me, and like, okay, this is where the bear runs away. But at the corner of my eye, two little black dots come down this hill. And there was the bear over there, 
and the cubs decided to come between me and mama bear. Not the place I wanted to be. So startled turns into scared. And I'm standing there, and if I were smart, I'd be making noise and be like, okay, do something, waves to get the cubs to go to mom, and hopefully they'll run off. Well, I didn't. I just stood there. I might as well just lay down and let the bear come and eat me because I literally did nothing. I just stood there and just decided to let it do what it was going to do. And when the bear, the cubs were coming down, mama bear came to be. Mama bear is a term for a reason. And that bear's demeanor, when it first saw me, we were just kind of like, oh, okay, you're you, I'm you. We're like, what are we going to do? But when the cubs came into the picture, that's when mama bear turned into mama bear. And it stood up on its two hind legs and went, oof. And that's what bears do, kind of as a warning. It's like, they go, oof, and they give you a warning. And it's like, yep, this is it. That's how I go. And I was like, and it's kind of a cool way to go, but not re- I wasn't really ready yet. So I didn't know what was going to happen. The bears came down, was getting between me and her, or yeah, me and her, and then it turned toward, they turned towards Mama Bear. Mama Bear and the cubs ran up the hill. So I hustled real fast to get back up to my friends, and oddly, or obviously, I was a bit startled and so processed it with them. But I tell that story for one reason, is that I believe we are at war. I believe our families are at war with the enemy. I believe that just like that mama bear took a stand, so did Joshua when he said, as for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. And I'm sure you would agree that our world is pretty messed up. We live in a crazy world. Just turn on the news for 12 seconds and you'll see how crazy it is. It's, it's crazy. And I want to give you a bit of context of where this verse comes from and why Joshua said that. So as you may know, Moses led the Israelites through the deserts and was going to the promised land that God promised them. And at the end of Moses' life, when he died, Joshua took over and actually led them into Canaan, which was the promised land. Now, Canaan was a world that was a country, whatever, that was an area that was full of debauchery, a lot of um, idols, serving false gods, false idols, sexual immorality, a lot like our world, a lot like our country. And when Joshua, at the end of his life, so Joshua was kind of like the, obviously the leader, but also like the general, led them through a lot of wars and a lot of battles. And at the end of his life, he kind of, he gave his last State of the Union address, and in that is where this verse comes from. In this verse, in Joshua 24, 14 through 15, it says, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I believe when Joshua said that, he said that just like that bear took its stand. Joshua knew that going into Canaan and the success of them in Canaan in their new promised land was going to be successful or not successful depending on the families. So the people he was talking to was his leaders. The leaders of his armies, the leaders of the the tribes, the leaders that were there. And he knew that when he told them, as for you and your family, you need to choose because your success is dependent on that. And why is that? Like, why is the family part so important? Because families make communities and communities make countries. As the family goes, the country goes. And that's why I believe we're at war and we're losing a lot of the battles. Just look at our country. Now, We may not be serving false gods, per se. Like, we're not choosing to serve the god of the sun or the god of the wind or whatever it may be. For most part, we're not doing that. The Canaanites were doing that, but we don't necessarily do that. But we do serve false idols. Now, what's a false idol? Well, there's this book that was written that, oh my gosh, this book... 
Holy cow. Talk about an inspired book. This thing, this thing is, whew, I'm telling you. Um, this, is, this is actually Pastor Dave's book, and it's, it is a good book. It's about, it's about idols, and he said I had to promote it, otherwise I couldn't preach again. <laughs> so there you go. There's your plug. That's my infomercial for you. Um, but no, actually, the reason why I'm reading it is because it does give a great explanation of what idolatry is. Here's my working definition of idolatry. Worship, service, or devotion to something that is not God, as though it were God, giving God's rightful place of ultimate devotion to someone or something else. To us, that something or something else, those false gods, are real simple stuff. It's selfishness, putting yourself first. It's laziness. It's social media, alcohol, drugs, any addiction, success, your career, anything that you put more passion, more emphasis, more attention to than God and others, that can be a false idol for you. Now, if we are at war, which I believe we are, I think our, fam our Christian families are at war, and if we are, then when you go to war, obviously both sides have battle plans. Satan's battle plan is simple. The key to his is to get you, your spouse, and your kids to put the love of self and stuff above the love of God and others. That's, that's his battle plan. He doesn't need anything elaborate. That's all he needs because we have so much stuff that can, we can fall in love with and put ahead of our family and above God. Tony Evans gave a great quote. The tragedy today is that many Christians think they are fighting flesh and blood in their marital and parenting issues rather than realizing that Satan has an agenda to destroy their home. Whoever controls the family controls the future, which goes back to that family, community, country. Whoever controls the families controls the future. So if we believe Satan has a battle plan, we need a battle plan as Christian families. Now, when I say family, I'm not meaning a family that looks just like mine. It doesn't have to be mom, dad, kids. It could be the nuclear family. It could be a mixed family. It could be a single parent family. It can even be a single person. Because I guarantee you, if Satan is trying to knock down our families, he might as well start and be proactive and start with you when you're single. Because if he gets to you then, he will absolutely be already ahead of the ball because you're taking in all that baggage to that family. So when I say family, it's including you wherever you're at. So in our battle plans, I'm looking at the as for me part. I believe that as for me, the man, the woman, the child, we need our own battle plans. If we all have our own battle plans, the battle plan for the family will take care of itself. And that's what I'm going to look at today. I'm going to look at our battle plans. And we're going to start with men. So I'm not a military person, so I'm, but I'm still going to use some generalizations of military. So if I screw something up, military people, I'm sorry. But for the most part, men would be looked at as the generals. God calls men to be the spiritual leaders of their house. It's biblical. That's the way it is. They are the spiritual leaders of their house. In Joshua 1.6, God told Joshua, Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Men, the land is heaven. And the people is your family. I believe we will be held responsible when we get to heaven for how we led our family as men. The first tactic, each tactic is going to, or each uh, battle plan is going to have three tactics. Tactic one and two are the same for all three. Tactic one, men, women and children, pretty much in here, is the Bible, Bible study, getting to know this. No general, no leader of an army is going to go into battle without a battle plan, without answers of like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to win? We know we're going to win in the end, but as families, we're losing a lot of battles. And every answer is in here. Whatever your battle is, men, whether it be stress, anxiety, addiction, it doesn't matter what it is, every answer is in here. 
So when we say, I don't know, I'm lost or whatever, you're not lost. It just means you're not looking in here. So this is it right here, men, women, and children. It's all right here. The second tactic, which is the same for everybody, is prayer. KCC emphasizes full life and having a personal relationship with Christ. If I claim to be friends with Brad Turnus, but I don't talk to Brad Turnus, I don't listen to Brad Turnus, I don't spend time with Brad Turnus, he's not my friend. He's an acquaintance at the most. It's the exact same thing with Jesus. If you're not talking, you're not listening, Jesus is an acquaintance. And we need to have a personal relationship with him. And the only way to do that is prayer. Now, for men that praying isn't comfortable for you, it's something you've never really done with your family, especially if you've been married for a while and you've never done it, but now you're feeling like, okay, I'm going to do it, it's going to be awkward. There's no way around it. I can try to make it look like, oh, it's going to be beautiful. It's not. It's going to be real awkward. Talking to God in front of people that you're not used to, if you aren't used to praying, is awkward. But I can promise you, that awkward wears off and the blessings will come in. My, this was the part that I was going to skip, possibly because I knew tears were going to come. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, it's my hope that my girls marry a man who prays. Because praying puts yourself below others and serves others. If that man's goal, his standard is the Bible and praying, then it's going to be good. Because if I try to live, if that man tries to live at his own standards and raise his family by his own standards, we'll always fail. Because every day my standards change of how I'm going to act. Every day, I fail all the time at trying to be and lift the standards that I want to. God's standards don't change. So if that's where you're pointing to as far as your standards and where you want your family to be is biblically in praying, then you can't go wrong. Tactic three is servant leadership. Servant leadership, that's huge. You know, we talk about men being the leaders, but being the leaders means being silent, means serving. It doesn't mean do this, do that. It means serving. I think our goal as men, and I think what we'll be held accountable for is, did we facilitate our daughters, our sons, to be the version of them that God wants of them? Did we instill in them the love and the education and pray with them, pray for them enough that's going to blossom them into what God wants them to be. And that is servant leadership. It's not about being a perfect man, because we're going to screw up. I screw up every single day. I sit up here and say what we need to do, but I still screw up at all this stuff. And it's not about, follow, it's not about being a perfect man. It's about following a perfect man. The second one will go to the women. The women are... Sergeant. So again, I don't know about military, so I was looking through the definition of like, what's a general do? What's a, what's a sergeant do? Well, the sergeant's job description was like super long. It was like, well, you, you manage, you train, you model, you equip, you supervise, you correct, you implement, you order, you develop, you plan, and on and on and on. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's the woman right there. That's, <laughs> that's it, because those are all things and then some that my wife does all the time. Now, men, we may be the spiritual leaders of the home, but we all know who leads the home. Just ask my kids. I could be standing in our living room and the kids come up, walk by me like I'm not even there, like just whoop, whoop, walk by me and then ask my wife, what are we doing today? What are we going to have for dinner? Can I go here? Can I go there? Can I order this on Amazon? Blah, blah, blah. And like, I'm literally standing right here. Why? Did, well, you could have asked me. And you know why they don't? Because when they ask me, I say, let me ask Dana. <laughs> like, that's, so they're just smart. They just bypass the middle guy. So there, it's, you know, it, it's smart. There's nothing wrong with it. So keep doing that. Um, and I want to start with, so we know that prayer and Bible study is one and two. But with women, I want to start with tactic three. Tactic three involves the prayer and the Bible study. 
its influence through daily action. Praying and Bible study, if, should be the norm in your house. If my kids were to come out of their rooms, which, a miracle right there, if my kids were to come out of their rooms and see Dana with her eyes closed, with the Bible open, or her Bible app open, whatever it is, and they see Dana is praying or doing devotion, and they had to ask a question, like, that's normal for them. That's, they see that. It's not a big deal. And they will just not ask her a question and go on their way. I mean, let's be real. They won't stop. They'll still ask her the question. But, but it's the norm. It's just normal. Like, if mom was praying, they were like, oh, okay, mom's praying. Not a big deal. So that's that daily influence. Just that they see mom with the Bible open. They see mom praying. Another way is super simple stuff. And I use Dana as an example, too, of like, it is stuff you're not even trying, where you have the word faith on your shirt. Or most of her posts are Facebook posts and stuff, or usually has something to do with her faith. When you get in her car, Christian music is playing. It's that simple stuff, that everyday stuff that our kids see and that other people see that is to testimony to others. And that everyday stuff is part of our battle plan, where our everyday little minute stuff has to be there. That's the foundation. It, everything doesn't have to be big and grandiose. It's that everyday stuff. Now, men and women, we're fighting together. We're not fighting face to face. We're fighting side by side, and that's our battle. So... Our battle, again, isn't all the big grandiose stuff, but we are battling. And take a look at this video that kind of describes it a little bit better. This is Chuck. This is Linda, and one night, coming back from their one-year anniversary dinner, their car was suddenly struck by a falling object, a 600-pound cow. True story. The couple was driving around a cliff outside of Manson, Washington, when the cow fell over 200 feet onto their minivan. The couple escaped with their lives by inches. Chuck said he didn't see the cow falling and didn't know what happened until after. Can I suggest that in marriage, cows are going to drop? Uninvited, unwanted, and unexpected. Many causing heavy damage. Some of you have already experienced them. You know them by the names financial difficulties, rebellious teenagers, infertility, illnesses, or pandemic. And if you haven't, I guarantee you they are lining up on the cliff and you won't see it falling or know what happens until you're stopped in your tracks. The truth is God designed your marriage to withstand the heavy damage caused by base jumping bovines. He promised he'd never leave us nor forsake us. So next time a cow drops unexpectedly into your world, absorb the hit, survey the damage, and then together, make steak. <laughs> we went to that Family Life Conference. We, if you remember, we talked about going to this Family Life Conference, and that's why I got the T-shirt on today. That's where we got it. So a few of us couples went to that um, last week, and it was, it was really good. But it's also very relevant. That... That's where Satan attacks. Satan isn't attacking you through demon possession and something that's like super, like you would think, like the devil attacking. It's not. It's through your finances. It's through not being able to talk to each other because you don't communicate well. It's about the stress of your career, about the stress of not having enough money, whatever it is. That's where Satan's attacking. And if you aren't taking those little things, if finances are a stress to you and your spouse, and you're not going to God in prayer over those, it's going to keep adding up. And that's where Satan attacks. Let's look at the youth. This is the last battle plan that we have is the youth. So if you're below 17 today, I'm talking to you. Or 18 and below, I'm talking to you. Prayer, same thing as your mom and dad, the adults. Prayer is important. This right here, your phone, if it's not charged or it's not plugged in, then it's useless. You need to be plugged into God. And prayer and Bible study is how you do that. With Bible study, if, if you were to open this, kids, if you were to open this and start reading, you're going to be done in about four minutes at the most. 
and then you're going to put it down because it's boring. And it's true. I'm not, I'm not trying to be up here again. Like, you know, if you open this up, God's coming through it and it's going to change your life. He may, and he's done that many, many times. But we also know we have to be real with this. It needs to be applicable to you. There is an app called the Holy Bible app. This app, and this is for men, women, everybody, but it's teens especially, there is Bible study devotions on stress, on friends who are jerks, and how to deal with stuff in school and sports and everything. It's all in there. It's all about the Bible, but it tells you how to live your life as a Christian for, in a way that is applicable to you and that's entertaining. I know my kids are on it, and I know my um, youngest daughter, she does one that's even, there's a Holy Bible app and there's another one, so you can ask her about that if you want. But the Holy Bible app, that is a place to start, an amazing place to start. Everything's in there that you need. The tactic three for youth, this one's tough. I'm asking you to do the thing that every teen does not want to do. I want you to stand out and be different. That's tough. As an adult in the U.S., being a Christian is pretty easy. It doesn't mean I'm going to lose any friends. It doesn't mean someone's going to make fun of me. No one's not going to not come to my party because I'm a weird Christian. But that's not necessarily true for you. But that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to stand out. Now, that doesn't mean carry your Bible to every class. That doesn't mean... People at your lunch table, you gather them together and start praying over your chicken nuggets. That's not necessarily what that means. It just means showing people love, being honest, obeying your parents, showing respect to the elders. Encourage your friends instead of bring them down. It's those little things. But stand out together. I can promise you, I am here greatly because of the friends I had as a kid in my church camp and my youth for Christ going through school. I would not be here if it wasn't for them. And those are the only friends that I still talk to to this day. So don't do it alone. Get together with your friends. Do the Bible app with your friends. The last group I want to talk about before we wrap up is advisors. Now, the military will often go outside the military. If they're in a battle or they need something done, they'll go outside the military to get advisors, experts in some field that's going to help them win the battle. We have advisors here. They're called grandparents. They're called the been there, done that's. People, their, their kids are out of the home. Those are our advisors. Now, we look to you, even though it doesn't seem like it, people that have kids, we look to you guys of like, that's what marriage looks like after the kids are out of the home. And we do it. You may not think we do, but we do. We still model ourselves after you. And we need your help. We need your help on how not to screw up our kids any more than we already are. You've made the mistakes. You've had the successes. You've had the victories. And you need to share them with us. Now, my era, and eras below me, we're not good at asking for help. And that's a fault of ours. That's a fault of mine. So us coming up to you and saying, hey, can you help me with this? Can you teach me about this? Can we spend some time together? Likely won't happen. So we need you to also be proactive. As much as we do too, we still need to come up to you, but we need you to come up to us. And that has happened to us, to Dana and I, and a few different people, where some of the people that are in there, been there, done that, have come up to us to help us in this church. And that's awesome. So we can look at, if we're in a battle, there's a lot of losses. We already know that. Look at divorce, look at addiction, look at abuse. There's lots of losses, but we have a lot of victories. So it's not all about loss. It's not all about like we're losing a battle. There's some awesome victories, and we could go through the Bible and look at them, but that's not what I'm going to do. We don't have to even look in the Bible. That's a, there's lots of them to look at, and we should, but we can look at it right here in this room. As for men who say, as for me and my house will serve the Lord, this is the other part that I knew I was going to cry. Um, and if I didn't just look at him, I wouldn't have been having an issue. But Gary Hensley, um, like I said, I was involved with CPS, foster care. So people who are foster care parents has a spot in my heart. Amen. He brings people into his home, 
kids into his home and shows them love. And as for him in his house, he's here on Sundays. Doesn't matter what his household looks like, who's in there, who's coming, who's going. As for him in his house, he's going to serve the Lord by being here, by serving on the security team, by being an example. Women. Diana T., Jennifer Kenner, Dean O'Connor, Courtney Dunn. These are just a few examples of women who will be here whether their husbands are or not. And that's not saying anything negative about their husbands. Maybe they're working, maybe don't have a husband, whatever it may be. But their faith is so strong that they're not dependent on their husband being here. They're here because they're a personal relationship with God. That's a victory. That's them saying, as for me in my house, I'm going to serve the Lord by doing that. Parents, Dave and Lori, you've got six kids? Six kids, and all of them have a walk with Christ. Statistically, that's amazing. We've all heard about preacher's kids. So that's amazing. My mom, only, my mom and dad only have two kids and only one half amazing one. I really hope my sister's listening right now on Facebook. Um, but it's true. And that's because, as for him and his house, as for them and their house, daily they chose to serve God through prayer, through devotion, whatever it may be, every day. Kids. So... This is something I encourage you to do. If you have a kid under 18 years old in your home, you should have access to their phone. At any time, you should be able to go on their phone and look through it. And so one day, I had my oldest daughter's phone, and I was going through it, and there was this long group chat, so I'm like scrolling through, I'm like, okay, what's going on? And it was, you know, they were back and forth, back and forth, and then it started to get a little sketchy. And I was like, oh, this is not what I want to see. Like, oh, my. Like, how do you know about that? Like, just sketchy, scrolling through it. But then I realized Jolie's no more in the group chat. And so I was like, wow, that's awesome. So I went to her and I said, good job. I noticed that once they started getting funky, you weren't in it no more, and I'm proud of you. She goes, yeah, once they start talking like that, I just get out of it and don't pay attention. That is her living her life as God intended. That is her saying as for her in her house, that's how she's going to serve the Lord because everybody in that group chat, I'm sure, saw that Julie went silent. So in conclusion, to wrap up, men, women, youth, grandparents, Bible study prayer, number one and number two. That's the foundation. Men, lead. Be a servant leader. Women, influence daily. Be a daily influence to people around you and to your kids. Youth, stand out. Don't be afraid to be different. Don't, make, don't be afraid to take a stand in your school and on, on the court, on the field, wherever it is. Stand out. Grandparents, be a mentor and advise us because we need you. Now, my call to action, I can say all these things, but if I don't give you something to actually do, then it's just listening to some words. So you were given a sheet when you came in here, and on that sheet, the first thing on there, I think, is the Bible app. Go to the Bible app, download it, and then after you download it, tonight or tomorrow morning, I'm going to send all of you an invite to do a study. Whoever is joined on our Bible app within KCC, I'm going to send you an invite to do a devotional with us. One specific to men, one specific to youth, and one's a specific men, women, and youth. So that's the first one, because that Bible app, everything you want in there, like if you're dealing with stress, anxiety, money, whatever it is, there's something in there for you from God. The next one is Dana and I are uh, the th our three strands, marriage and family ministry leaders, and it's for if you have a family that has school-aged children or you're newly married or engaged, this is a ministry that we have that we want to serve you. Because Th this whole sermon is about that, is about you. We want to serve you. We want to build up families. One way we're doing that is every first Sunday of every month is um, around the corner by Menards is uh, Main Street Pub. And they do something cool already. They give one free meal to any child that comes with a parent, which is cool. But KCC is also going to pay for one free meal for an adult. So if you're a mom and a kid, you can come and eat for free. And it's just a bunch of us just going to be there 
hanging out, talking, doing life together, fellowship. So please join that, and we'll send you more stuff about that. Um, I'm going to close in prayer, but before I do, there's going to be elders up here that is going to pray with anybody who wants prayer. If you want prayer for yourself, man, woman, youth, if you want to bring your family up here and pray, please do. A lot of what I've talked about today is about people that are already saying and hang this sign saying, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. If that's not a choice that you've made yet, this is the time to do it. And those elders will love more than anything to bring you to Christ at that point. So please come up here and just tell them that. Bring your family up here and tell them that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much for being here. It's amazing that we don't even have to ask you to be here. You are here. Holy Spirit, you are here. And I pray that what is heard and what is in people's hearts now, if you spoke to them, that they can take that next step, especially if they know that need, they, they need to commit their life to you, that they can come up and do that with our elders. That is, that's the most important part. So, Lord, I pray for everyone in this room right now that we can go home and we can serve you and say, as for me, my house will serve the Lord. Thank you. You are dismissed.